Good morning. I, I'm just getting stuff ready here. And let me see. Hi, Mindy. <laughs> Can you guys hear me and see me? Uh, awesome. Thank you, Molly. James, Jamie, what's up, people? Cool. So um, we are right at 11 o'clock. And for whatever reason, I do not see uh, people coming in or out. So I know there's at least like five of you, but I gotta think there's a whole lot more. So if I am not acknowledging you, I'm sorry. I'm still kind of getting used to this Zoom webinar thing. Um, Does so everybody have a cup of coffee or water or something? Look, my cup says currently caffeinating. Kind of funny. I don't know if you can see me like my video or. Hmm. Mindy says, hopefully they weren't on the call at 10 o'clock. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, we had a little timing issue. Hopefully, uh, yeah. Oh, now I see. Oh, I see it now. There are people coming in. Okay. All right. Cool. So um, what are we going to do? We're going to talk about referrals today. That's what we're going to do. And as I kind of see people coming in still, we talk about a lot of good stuff. Um, Kevin, I know Kevin, I know that name. All right, I'm actually going on vacation tomorrow, so I'm a little bit like, you know, I'm one foot in and I'm one foot out today, but I'm gonna deliver some, I'm gonna deliver some good stuff. I got another meeting at 12 and then, and then that's it. I'm done for the day. I'm actually done for the week. Um, tomorrow is uh, tomorrow's actually, um, I don't know if you guys care or not. I'm just kind of waiting here for uh, people to come in. But um, tomorrow is actually me and Addie's anniversary. And uh, so 21 years so if we were a child we can actually legally drink now so i think that um i think there should be a lot of alcohol involved in this vacation because we're legal now i don't know what do you guys think about that i think that's uh i think that's uh probably a good thing all right i'm rambling on here for like three minutes. Um, I think I'm going to, I'm just going to go like, let me just get the, let me get set up on the other side. I'll share my screen with you guys. Let me see here. I got to make sure I can do this. I'll leave the, um, by the way, just a couple housekeeping things. I'll leave the chat open. Um, so that if you guys have questions, put them into the chat. Um, where is, oh, it's here. Okay, so I gotta close out later. All right, so let me hit share. I'm gonna share my desktop. All right, so now you guys should be able to see uh, both, but let me get rid of me now and go to the presentation. 
So now you guys should see how to magnetically attract more referrals. Um, do you guys, hey, Jamie, can you guys see the, the webinar chat uh, panel that's on my screen? Sorry, again, I'm still getting used to it, but, but believe me, I got good stuff for you, so it'll be worth it. So you can see that. All right, so let me do something else then. Let me do, okay, give me just a second. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm going to exit out of this. I'm gonna do a new share. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go here. And, okay. Okay, so that should have gotten, yes, thank you, Jamie, that's what I did. Okay, cool. So now you guys should be able to see, oh, look at this, did not change my screen. So you guys can still see my the chat? That's weird. Maybe I have to close it. All right, I'll close it. Okay, so I guess, oh, what it'll do is, okay, hey, Jamie, do you guys, do you see, oh, screen sharing is paused? Why is that? Uh, 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 resume. Oh, there we go. Okay, finally, we got it. We're set. I think you guys can see my screen um, and not see all of the other stuff, right? Did not change, yes, yeah, okay, cool. All right, here we go. How to magnetically attract more referrals. All right, so if you, you guys have seen me do this before, but we're gonna do it again. I got five leads. I got an internet lead, I got a repeat customer, I got a TV lead, I got a referral, and I got a newspaper. You gotta run one of these today. Which one do you want first? Probably repeat. That's what I want first. But close behind that is what? Referral. We want that referral. Why do we want the referral? Right? Because they're great leads. Right? And so if those are the leads that we want, doesn't it make sense to focus just a little, little bit of time, energy, and money to get more of these leads? I say, yes, absolutely. It's what we do here every day. So if you get more of these leads, you are getting more high quality leads while lowering lead costs. Look, lead costs keep going up every year. Every, we all know this, okay? The, um, last year, um, oh crap, I'm gonna see it next week, but it's like it went from $376 to 400 and, God, it's like 13 or $420 for an issued lead lead costs are going up. So what we all have to do, all of us, regardless of the business that we're in, even us as a, as a marketing business, we need referrals to offset our lead costs, right? We need to replace, or not replace, but, but, um, but have these lower cost leads come in to kind of offset the more expensive leads that we're getting from wherever we're getting them from or wherever you are getting them from. When you get more referrals, when you're sitting in front of a referral, there's a thing that I call automatic trust. Automatic trust means that if you came referred from, or if I came referred by somebody you know, like, and trust, there's automatically trust built in, which makes the sale easier, right? And by the way, when making that sale, there's a lot less price resistance. 
a lot less price resistance, okay? None of us likes uh, to, to get beat up on price. All of us should be charging premium prices, okay? Um, get more of these leads, you're gonna make more money and your business is gonna be stable and you're gonna have more long-term success, all right? So you need to have long-term staying power in this business. You might be making a lot of money now, but what you don't want to do is when things do start to slow down, which they inevitably will, which right now it's looking like it's gonna last for a little while, and hopefully that is the case, but we can't always rely on that. We've got to build a business that's gonna last in good times and in bad. You got to also make more money so that you're building wealth for your family, all right? For you, your family, and your team. You wanna make sure that the people that are working for you, working with you, are also coming up, that they're also doing well. You can't be the only one that's doing well, all right? And ultimately, you know, I say this all the time. If you listen to anything I do, if I, you see me on stage, you listen to the podcast, the last thing I want for you is to be a slave to your business. The business is there to serve you. You are not there to serve it, right? You are the master. It is not, right? And so that's why we want to get a nice chunk, healthy chunk of our business from the relationships that we develop. For me, from my experience, that healthy number is between 25 and 35%. 25 and 35%. So if you're a four, let's make the math easy. If you're a $4 million company, a million to a million two, a million three should be coming from relationships that you've developed. Now, obviously, if, that, if, you're, if you're there already, you wanna push that number a little bit higher, okay? The more, the better, because these are the people that when you set this system up, these are gonna be the people that take care of you and your business and your family and your people's families for years and years and years and years. Now, ignore this, and here's a whole lot of other bad stuff that can happen, which I'm not gonna necessarily go over, but you know, you're gonna have to deal with you know, elite costs that keep going up all of the time. You're constantly chasing after that next lead, right? You're constantly, you know, your close rates are, are gonna be lower because you don't have that offset of high uh, close rates, right? And look, if you don't have a system set up for creating customers that are gonna go talk about you out in the marketplace and tell their friends and tell their family and tell their coworkers about you, then you are at the mercy, at the mercy of TV, radio, newspapers, internet, Google, fake, however the hell you're getting leads. You are at their mercy, all right? You don't wanna be in that situation, right? So, for those of you that are new and um, have never been on one of these webinars before, uh, why should you listen to me? Um, well, I kind of have a little bit of experience with home improvement. And so, you know, I started in the home improvement business when I was 21 years old. That's a lot longer ago than I want to admit. Um, for the last 10 years, it's gonna be it's gonna be our anniversary, believe it or not, our 10 year anniversary of starting G4 is like right now. I did a webinar and I and I and damn it, Addy, Addy knows the date. Addy, what's the date of that first webinar I did? Sorry, she's over in the other office and 
hopefully she's going to give me that date. But it was like May 14th, I think. And we signed up our very first client, Mr. Charlie Gindel from Dial One Windows. And since then, we have gone on, we've made it for 10 years in this business. We're doing better than ever. We've gone on to work with some of the biggest names in the home improvement business. Um, and this is the areas that we really focus on. So this is what we've done for the last 10 years at G4 Marketing is really focus on the areas of developing customers for life, developing relationships with customers, helping our clients get reviews, referrals, um, repeat business, and develop really strong, sticky relationships with their customers. So that's probably why you might want to listen to what I have to say. I got a little bit of experience with this. All right, so referrals. Here's the sad reality of referrals. 83% of customers are willing to provide a referral. By the way, by the way, um, I think for home improvement, these numbers are actually both lower, but let's just kind of go with them, okay? 83% of customers are willing to provide referrals. However, only 29% of those customers actually do. Now, again, I think in home improvement, these numbers are lower. We are not the most favored industry out there, right? So this is what we are up against, right? So how do we fix this? Wow, that was kind of a cool um, transition. I didn't even do that. So why don't they refer more? These are really important. You wanna write these down. These are important, these are critical. This is why you're not getting more referrals. One, your customer experience was just okay. It was just all right. It wasn't memorable. You didn't give them a good enough reason to refer. Here's a biggie. And I, if you don't write anything else down, if you don't get anything else out of this training today, get this. this is the, if you walk out with just this, that, that will be your key to unlocking all of this. You didn't give your customer a story to tell. You did not give them a story to tell. And if you haven't given them a story to tell, that goes back to your customer experience. You just weren't that memorable, right? You just satisfied your customer. Again, to me, satisfied customers are a liability. You probably, if you've been on any of these before, you've heard me say that. A satisfied customer is a liability. Why? Because you don't have a system for creating raving fans. You need a system for creating raving fans, not a system for creating satisfied customers. Um, another reason they don't refer you more is you just don't ask, right? You didn't stay in touch and you didn't make them feel special and appreciated. Now, if you look at customer experience, you can give them number two, number three, and number six here, they all tie together. They all tie together and they are the basis of whether or not you're gonna get referrals. And by the way, by the way, this goes for uh, uh, all four R's, reviews, relationship, relationship, referrals, and repeat. This is true, I could do this exact same training for reviews, I could do it for repeat, I can do it for referrals. It's all the same. They all fall into that same category, all right? So this is it. These are the reasons why you don't refer more, okay? So how do we fix it? How do you do it? How do you magnetically attract more referrals to your business? There is a formula, okay? I actually haven't used this. I, I use it um, as far as how we structure the, the, the system, um, but it's been a really, really long time since I've used this acronym, EARN. Okay, I thought I, I th actually thought about it yesterday and thought, hey, let me reintroduce this because it really, these acronyms kind of make things um, easier to uh, understand and adopt. And it's very simple, E-A-R-N, earn, okay? Earn, ask, reward, nurture, okay? Number one, 
number one. This is the number one rule to getting more referrals and repeat business and reviews and relationships which lead to word of mouth. Number one, you have to earn the right to referrals. And this all starts with your customer experience. Nothing else to me, nothing else matters unless you get this right. Look, you can have the best selling system. You can have the best lead generation system. But if you deliver a crappy or marginal, moderately decent customer experience, guess what? Your sales won't be nearly as high as they could be. Your lead generation is going to cost you a lot more than it should. And you aren't going to make, it's going to be harder and harder for you to make money. Remember, this is about making money. Right? So you got to get this right. Now look, when this stat came out, I, I forgot when it's from, but it's from like two or three years ago. The original stat, it's from a company called Walker. By 2020, customer experience will overtake price and product as key, the key brand differentiator. Now, I've used this slide for a long time, and here's what I, I've never really said about this slide. This is like nothing really new. Okay, these guys just put it out there to say, hey, look, look how smart we are. We made this comment. But look, this is already happening. And the smart companies have understood this for a long time. It's not about your price and it's not about your product. It's about how you differentiate yourself from everybody else. It's about the value you deliver to your customer. And that value comes from, yes, product. Yes, installation of that product, but even more so and even more importantly is what is the experience that you are taking your customer through? Yesterday, I did, I did uh, three podcast interviews, okay? Yesterday was my podcast day. I did three podcast interviews. And um, these will be coming out probably in a couple months. All three of them, all three of them, okay? One, one guy, I'll tell you, I'll give you kind of a, a little heads up. I'm looking at the clock here. I'll, I'll get us done before, before 12 o'clock. But one, one of these guys was talking all about how he built his business from day one around the customer experience. This guy killing it with reviews, killing it re with reviews, right? His um, top lead sources are the internet, which he does not pay for, by the way, which he's not paying for PPC. He has got himself into the, the Google three pack. And so when I put in best siding company in with his comp with his city name, guess what? He shows up in that Google three pack. He has better reviews than the other two that are on there. So what happens? He's getting a lot of phone calls. Okay, that's one guy. The second guy we're talking I, I talked to was all about systems and processes. And um, we talked about price, the importance of price. We talked about the importance of having uh, structured processes to run your business. The last guy that I spoke with yesterday, awesome guy. Awesome, awesome. You're going to love all three of these interviews, by the way, were killer. I mean, absolutely killer. But the last one was Dave Normandin from Long Roofing. Long's a new client of ours. They did $60 million last year. They're on their way to $100 million. And all of this stuff was, was all um, discussed with, uh, with Dave. We talked particularly about pricing and how they command so much more than the competition. And the competition is like, how the hell do you do this? I have another client, Aries Roofing. Everybody knows that they're more expensive than everybody else, but why? Because they deliver on, uh, they deliver an experience that supports their promise, right? So what is the promise of your business? The promise should be that we are going to deliver 
to you a superior product with you know installed by you know superior people but we're but also you are going to have a superior experience through the whole, whole thing no hassle no stress no worry no risk okay so anyway let's move on um, so we know that right now right now in particular there has never been a time where customer experience was as critical to your success and to mine right as it is today i mean we're all about here even as a marketing company okay we're all about the customer experience a couple of reasons one it's just that's just who we are that's just who me and addy are if you've ever if you've done business with us before if you come to our events you know we're all about the customer experience but also look when a new client comes in or a prospect comes in and they're thinking about working with G4 marketing, what are they going to do? They're going to go and they're going to look at our reviews. And guess what? We've got like, I don't know. I think we've got almost 60 reviews. Every single one, every single one is five stars. Every single one. Now, you know, we work hard for that. By the way, the guy that I was talking about yesterday, that's killing it with reviews, every single one of his reviews is five stars. Now for some companies, that's not practical. I mean, if you're a 10, $20 million company, that's not really practical, okay? So what I always say is your ideal range is 4.6 to 4.8, because obviously the more clients you handle, right, the more room there is, This it's home improvement. There's the more room there is for um, stuff to happen or go sideways, right? So customer experience is really what's gonna drive here, you know, the things that we've been talking about, referrals and word of mouth, repeat business, reviews, premium pricing, customer relationships, okay? And today it's about, this is why to me, again, a satisfied customer is a liability. Today it's about turning those ordinary satisfied customers into raving fans. And how do you do it? You create wow, a, a wow experience, right? You look at every piece of your um, customer experience from the very first interaction all the way through to the end and then beyond. And you just ask yourself a simple question. At this point in the process, how do I make my customer go, wow? That's the question you ask. It's a simple question. How, at this point in the process, okay? And these are kind of the majors. These are the four majors, right? Phone call, in-home presentation, installation, and post-project follow-up. There's a few in-betweens here, but these are kind of the majors. So how do you look at these and in these interaction points, how do you get your customer or your prospect to say, wow, these guys are different, okay? It, this is all about standing out. Now, this is not about standing out from your uh, competitors, okay? Other contractors, quite frankly, that's easy because most of them suck, all right? This is what you, you really want to do this right. You need to stand out from anybody and everybody they've ever done business with in the past and they're going to do business with in the future. I want you to think about something. Okay. I want you to think about something. There's a simple thing. Okay. And this is one of the, we have what we call the four pillars of relationship marketing. Okay. Appreciation, feedback, referrals, and uh, customer nurturing. Okay. What in the, in the appreciation part, we talk about standing out and we ask the question, when was the last time you got a gift from somebody you did business with? And I want you to think about this. When was the last time you got a gift from somebody that you did business with? Okay. Now, the interesting thing about that is as you're, you're looking for and thinking about that person is, Two things. One is, well, you really got to go digging because most people don't. Most people don't say thank you. Okay. 
after you've given them money, mm -hmm. regardless of how much money it is. In your case, your if your job is five thousand, eight thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand. That's a lot of damn money that people are spending. For most people, that's a lot of money. And then to not say thank you after, you know, do you, do you really not have enough money built into a job to spend a few bucks to say thank you? But beyond that, beyond it just being the right thing to do, it's a way, it's a simple way for you to stand out from the competition. Because here's the deal, look, if you show up like everybody else and you satisfy your customer and you walk out, you are like all the white eggs on this, if you can see my screen. I don't want to be the white egg. I don't want to be like everybody else. I want to be the gold egg in the middle. And by doing these things and by wowing people, you stand out. And again, I don't, I, I, you, you're not just going to stand out from other contractors. You got to stand out from anybody and everybody they've done business with in the past. So let's say they bought a high of a luxury car. Okay. So luxury car manufacturers tend to send out stuff. A lot of this stuff is very self-serving though. Okay. Very self-serving. I, um, <laughs> Mindy says from you, um, sorry, as, as I see the chat coming up, um, I want to make sure I deal with it. Um, but a lot of this stuff is very self-serving. So I remember I got something, right? I mean, I have, I have a box over there just as an example from the last car that I bought, but the whole box, it's like it, all the shit is still inside of it. Okay. And the box is just sitting there and it's okay, but it was all self-serving. It was all about them. But I still remember, hey, they sent me something, right? But you want to be the one that it's not about me. It's about you, right? People will remember that. And if they remember you, now you got a shot at word of mouth and referrals, by the way, and repeat and reviews, okay? So it's about standing out from everybody else, right? Now. You like that? Shameless plug alert, all right? So if you don't like shameless plugs, now's the time to cover your ears because I'm gonna do a plug, all right? In, a, in a, about a month and a half, no, yeah, about a, no, like five or six weeks, um, I am going to be doing another one of our customer experience workshops here in Miami where we walk through step-by-step step how to create your ultimate customer experience. June 5th and 6th here in Miami, Ritz-Carlton, Key Biscayne, beautiful property. Um, I'm gonna tell you what's included here is your workshop, your workshop materials, lunch breaks, special private dinner on June the 5th, uh, breakfast and breaks on June 6th. Um, this is completely and totally 100% risk-free. You got a money back guarantee. Regular price is seventeen ninety five, dollars uh, primary, but you won't pay that. Um, we have an offer right now, but until May 10th, you'll save 500 bucks if you want to do this. I've got the URL down below, homeimprovementsuccess.com. That's where you go to sign up for this if you want to create your ultimate customer experience. It's $12.95 for the first person in your company. And then it's only $6.95 if you want to bring other people. But you've got to be a principal. You've got to be somebody that can actually make change happen in your company. Here's another deal. I'll sweeten it. That amazing hotel, I bought 10 rooms. Okay? I have 10 rooms for the first night. So some of them are already gone. I don't know how many of them are already gone. But there are, I know there's a few left. So if you're one of the first 10 people to register, I'll pay for your room night. One room uh, the night of the 5th. All right? Homeimprovementsuccess.com. That is the end of my shameless plug. Q&A. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Um, okay, so there you go. Uh, save 100, 500 bucks. First 10, get a free guest room the night of June 5th. Um, that's one guest room per company. Like I said, I bought 10 rooms that night of the fifth. Homeimprovementsuccess.com or you can call us 
and um, and we'll take care of the registration there. All right. So that's piece number one. You got to earn the right to referrals. Otherwise, it ain't happening. Right. It ain't happening. It's about experience. It's about trust and it's about confidence. All right. Number two is ask. Ask for referrals. Now, here's the big thing that you know we're where people run into problems. Your referral strategy, a lot of people say they have a referral program. So look, we do this every day. Ask, tell me what your referral program looks like. Right? And then they give us their referral program and it's like lasts like two or three days. And the referral program for a lot of people is, hey, we have this, you know, we have this fancy brochure. And here it is. If you send us a referral, um, then we'll do this. And if that person does that, and then we'll do this. And it's like this whole big, stupid, complicated thing. And guess what they do with this? They put it in the job pack, in the folder, and they fold it up and they hand it to the people. And then that's what happens to that folder? Where does the folder go? It goes in a file drawer somewhere that will they'll never, ever, ever look at it again. So there you go. You have a referral program, but it only lasts a couple days. No, you got to keep asking over and over and over and over and over again, right? The other piece of this too is you got to make a big deal out of every referral that comes in, right? So here's your kind of your path to more referrals. You got to create a referral program. Okay, so under this ask piece is you got to have a referral program. So create your referral program. Come up with a reward. Okay, we're going to, the R is the next reward. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a second, but come up with a reward amount. I recommend that you reward uh, for the appointment. Okay, look, I see these referral programs every day. They frustrate the hell out of me. It's like, okay. Here's the deal, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner. If you send us a referral, okay, and we set that appointment, and we go run that appointment, and if they buy, we will send you X number of, you know, some people do like, we'll send you 1% of the overall amount. Now look, we know that 1% of $10,000 is 100 bucks. It's a lot of money, but you know what? 1% sounds like crap. It sounds terrible. What the hell am I going to do with 1%? Right? Tell them 100 bucks instead. But the problem is, is that look at all the hoops that have to be jumped through. You know, I don't, I don't reward on, a, I, I don't make the condition I have to sell the job to make the reward. Think about something. If you do it based on that condition, right? You're rewarding one third of the number of people, one half to one third. I'd rather reward more people because what we want to do is encourage the behavior. Get us in the house. That's all we want. Just, just put that person in front of me. It's up to me then to sell them, not up to you. Make it simple, right? Make sure your entire team understands this and knows that they are part of this process. Okay. Promote your program, we're gonna talk about that in N, and then make a big deal out of every referral. Everybody in your company needs to understand that referrals are meant to, we, we need to make a big deal out of every referral that we get. Why? Why do we wanna make a big deal? Because we wanna reward the behavior, we wanna incentivize the behavior, we want more of it. And the only way you're gonna get more of it is if you make a big deal out of it. All right. Number three, reward. Okay. So let's talk about this uh, appointment deal. Okay. So I, most of our clients, most of our clients, uh, we recommend they do 25 or 50 bucks for the appointment. Okay. Now we've tested all kinds of different numbers. I had a client that was doing $250 for an appointment. Now, think about something. Think about something, though, because people cheap out on this all the time. They think, oh, well, I'm only, if only, I'm only going to give money if it sells. Well, is that how it works with pay, PPC? You're paying $35 for a click on PPC, 
hoping that that click turns into a form submission, hoping that that form submission turns into uh, actual somebody on the phone, hoping that that turns into an appointment, hoping that that then turns into a sale. By the time you're done with that whole thing, you're at a $400 issued lead cost and a $1,200 sale, okay? So if you're willing to spend $400 on an issued lead, why wouldn't you spend a hundred bucks or 200 bucks for a referral that turns into an appointment, right? You gotta do math sometimes, and this is a math business, and people just don't do it. It's, by the way, as you could tell, it's for me, because I gotta deal with this all the time, it's really freaking annoying. But regardless, $250, didn't make a difference between 50 and 250. He's down to, I think he's down to 50 bucks now. Doesn't make a difference. The amount doesn't matter. Here's what matters. You making a big deal out of it. Sending them a thank you card, making a phone call, sending them the check. You know, for some people, now look, let's talk about the whole, if a sale is made. So I have a client, Danny Peterson. If anybody's ever run into Danny Peterson, he is the, he's a sweetheart. He loves his customers and his customers love him. You know what he does? He has a system. Okay. I, I didn't come up with this. I can't even execute it. I, he does it incredibly well. Not only, I, I believe he's saying thank you for what, when the appointment is made, but he also then says, okay, if I make the sale, I'm also going to send you something. Okay. So again, do the math. So if you, if I give you, so you, let's just say play prospect 50 bucks and you introduced me to somebody and I sat with them and I ran the appointment. Let's just say that I need three of those. Okay. Three of those to make a sale. How much am I in for? A hundred and fifty dollars, 150 bucks. That's nothing to make a sale, right? Three of them, 150 bucks to make a sale. Whereas typically right now, it's like $1,200 to make a sale, $1,300 to make a sale. I'm into this thing for 150 bucks. So why not reward on the appointment and reward if somebody buys? Send a bigger reward, send them a couple hundred bucks. You don't have to, but I'm just saying, do the math. Think about this, right? Now, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing where people mess up. You don't keep a good tally or track of who is making, who are making referrals. So here's the thing. You have to always ask in your phone scripting, you always have to ask the second question. So people will always ask, well, how'd you hear about us? Oh, I found you on the internet. Internet. Ask the second question. The second question is, did you start at the internet or was there something else that sent you to the internet? Maybe they saw a TV ad. Maybe one of their neighbors told them about you. Maybe they saw a newspaper ad. Maybe they, sh they saw you at a home show and they went and did some research. And then they're gonna say, well, what are they gonna say? Well, they're sitting in front of their computer. Internet, not an internet lead right? So you got to ask. I always tell people to ask, who can I thank for referring you to us today? That's, all, that's a great way to start. Oh, I wasn't referred. Great. How'd you hear about us? Simple, right? How, you got to understand who made the referral. If somebody says, oh, I was referred by a neighbor. Okay, great. Referral. No. Who's the neighbor? Because we want to thank them. We want to call them and we want to say thank you or we want to send them a card or we want to do something, right? Find out who that person is, get their name, okay? So that you know who to reward. Look, if a, if a neighbor is making a referral and they see your truck show up there a month later, a month and a half later, and they haven't gotten a phone call or a card or something. Look, most people aren't looking for it. 
But guess what they're thinking in the back of their mind? Oh, good for them. They got it, but I didn't hear anything from them. They didn't acknowledge me for giving the referral, right? You don't want to be that person. You don't ever want to be that person, right? Reward. Reward is, is critical. So this is kind of like, this is what we do for our clients to say thank you. We send them out a thank you card. We put a check in there. You know, we send it in this, you know, fancy gold envelope. We actually send these out priority mail with the fancy gold envelope inside. We make a big deal out of it, okay? You have to do the same. You've got to make a big deal out of it because that's how you keep the referrals going. I'm not going to get into the whole 80-20 rule, right, and go off on that rant, but every single person... You know, or, or if, if somebody makes a referral, they're like four times more likely to make more, right? So, well, maybe I will go to the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your referrals are gonna come from 20% of your customers, okay? You gotta know who those 20% are. And guess what? 5%, 5% or 95% of your referrals are gonna come from 5% of your customers. Don't you wanna know who they are? You do. Those are the people you want to know and you want to nurture and you want to protect because they're promoters, okay? And then finally, the last piece, nurture. This is where most people completely uh, miss out, completely mess up. Not only do I want to protect and defend my customers against the competition, but guess what? I also want to remind them on an ongoing, continual basis of who I am, the solutions I provide, and how the hell to get a hold of me. Because guess what? They will forget about you if you let them, right? They, they will forget about you if you let them. And you know this. And if you know it and you're not doing something about it, then you don't know it, okay? So here's what I recommend, a company newsletter, okay? Now, we do here, we do two forms of the newsletter, two, electronic and print. I will not only do electronic. Why? Even though we've got very high open rates for email, up in the depends on the client and all that, but between you know 20 and 30 percent, which is incredibly high, and we've got pretty low open or uh, opt out rates, even us incredible open rate of 30 percent means that 70 percent of your customers never saw it, right? So the people with the email see it, they see your company name, boom, they might delete it and move on to the next, but guess what? They saw you. They saw you every month, they saw you, and then guess what, every quarter you show up physical prints. We do it January, April, July, and October, okay? Look right here. Here's the referral program right here on the back panel. We do a contest every quarter. Why do we do a contest? We ask people this all the time. Why do we do a contest? Every quarter we do a contest for our clients, why? It gives us an excuse to show up and talk about referrals because guess what I know? If you don't remind them, if you don't keep talking to them about it, guess what? You aren't going to get anywhere near the referrals you could be getting or should be getting. Simple, right? So you got to nurture those customers and you nurture them by keeping in touch, keeping in touch, keeping in touch, keeping in touch. You got to take a piece of your marketing budget and put it towards customer relationships. Okay. And look, this is what we do here every day. Okay. I, we have a hundred and I don't know, hundred, almost 200 clients that we do it for every day. Okay. You don't have to do it with me, but you got to do it. Okay. And I don't care if you do it yourself or you have somebody else do it for you. Right. Obviously, I want you to do it with me if you're a good fit for us. But look, I, I want you to be successful, okay? You got to do this. 
You got to do this. Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere near the type of, you're, you're not going to make anywhere near the kind of money that you could be making or should be making in this business. And you're not going to have the staying power in this business that you could have or you should have. Okay. This stuff's critical. So the big question for you to ask yourself is, can you do this? Can you do it? Will you do it? I can't answer that for you, but I think you can. I mean, look, these people, we use the, their case studies all the time. Now, I'm gonna tell you right up front, they are outliers, okay? Last year, a crazy amount of it, almost $30 million, the majority of that business comes from the relationships that they've developed. Referrals, word of mouth, repeat business. And by the way, they sell one product. One, okay? One, one product. Of which, there's a bunch of other people in their market that sell the exact same product with the exact same warranty. They're one of the biggest, they might be the biggest in, the, in their, in their uh, market. But I also know that they spend this much on marketing and guess where most of that this much goes? To developing those customer relationships by rewarding referrals, right? And those referrals and that word of mouth has kept this business growing year after year. When they started with us in 2010, early 2010, they were, um, they don't mind me saying this, right? They don't, I'm sorry, I'm just talking to myself. They start, they, when they started with us in 2010, they were a $5 million company. This year, they're gonna do over $30 million. And most of that growth has come from their customers promoting them, making leads for them, selling for them. And by the way, they're probably the most expensive in their market. They sell roofing, right? Are you going to get most of your business from repeat and referral? Probably not. Probably not. But guess what? If you got half of their numbers, if you got half 30 to 40% of your business from repeat and referral, what would that do to your marketing costs? What would that do to your profitability? That's what you got to think about, all right? So action steps, design and execute an amazing customer experience. Say thank you the right way. Stand out from everybody else. Make sure you're getting feedback. Make sure you've designed a system to create raving fans. If you're not creating raving fans, understand why by getting their feedback. Ask for referrals through your own referral rewards program reward everybody that makes a referral that turns into an appointment even if it doesn't man what if you just had a way of calling people and just saying hey thank you we really appreciate you trusting us enough to introduce us to your friend we haven't met with them yet but you know we're calling and you know we're, we we called them to try and set an appointment just something like that it would change everything. It would change everything for you when it comes to this. And look, there's a formula. I showed it to you, okay? E-A-R-N, remember that, okay? Hopefully that makes it easier for you. Earn, ask, reward, nurture. Earn, ask, reward, nurture. That's the formula. There's no like, um, there's all kinds of like fancy software. I look at this stuff all the time and I look at this and I think, you know, all this fancy, fancy, fancy stuff for making referrals, it's like a mask for the real work. The real work is earning the damn right to the referral. It's asking for it. It's making sure that when somebody does make a referral, that you go back and you say, here, thank you, we appreciate you. And it's making sure that they don't forget who you are and just stay in touch and stay in touch and stay in touch. That's the formula, okay? These fancy systems and all of that, oh, for $200 a month, we're gonna do this for your referrals and all that, fine, great, okay, but if you don't do this part of it, 
the fancy technology, just like all those review platforms. We have a review platform. Well, guess what? If you do crappy work and you don't text people and ask them or email them and ask them for reviews, guess what? The platform means crap, doesn't do anything. The same thing with this, all right? So um, just to give you a sense of what our deal looks like, what we do for our clients. So after a job has been completed, obviously we send them out a, a, a box. We say, thank you. There's a thank you card in there and it's all about them. It's all about them. We make a small introduction to the referral rewards program um, in the box, but really it's just all about saying thank you and showing up and being different from everybody else. We provide our clients with collateral material. We provide training. We go deep, much deeper on this. I mean, look, you guys all know, I can't share everything with you, all of our, you know, trainings and tricks and tips and all of that with just everybody. You know, people pay us a lot of money for us to go deeper on into this with them. I'm giving you like, if you just did what I told you here today, um, you will get more referrals. Um, but we do trainings with our clients. We share best practices. We show them, hey, here, look. We give them scripting. Here's when to ask. Here's when the right time, the wrong time, blah, blah, blah. But we send out this letter. We call it our fake check letter a couple weeks after the box goes out because we want to introduce them to the referral rewards program. Like I said, we run contests every quarter. Every quarter since 2009, 10 years, we've been running a contest. Why? Because it gives us an excuse to keep showing up. All of our clients get a referral rewards website. And there's collateral again, there's collateral material that goes with it. And then every communication that goes out, every communication that goes out on their behalf, particularly the newsletters, has the referral rewards program embedded into it, built in to it. That's how important this is. You gotta keep over and over and over reminding, 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 okay? So, um, any questions? Any questions? What I'm gonna do, uh, let's see here. Questions, questions. Uh, thank you, Steve. You are a gentleman. Steve said, another great webinar. Very well done. I always learn a lot from you. Thank you, sir. I always learn a lot from you. Um, your podcast, by the way, Mr. Steve Renacamp, is, uh, is on, uh, I think it's coming out in the next... Um, very soon, very soon. Um, somebody raised a hand, but I don't know where it went. Somebody had a question. Um, by the way, here, um, while you're doing this, I'm gonna put this poll up. Um, anybody want to schedule a um, strategy session with us where we'll go a little bit deeper on um, the entire like relationship marketing um, uh, platform and how we do it. There's no obligation. Um, there's absolutely no obligation um, during those calls. Um, we just want, you know, we just want to talk and see if we're right fit and if you're right fit for us. So if you can, please go in there and just hit the poll. Um, the faster you do that, the faster I will take it down and um, get to any questions. Um, if we have them, um, a third of you have voted. Keep going. Your options are yes, please, I want a strategy session. Maybe I need more information and no, not right now. And guess what? No is fine. I, look, I'm not for everybody and you may not be in the right place to do it. I, I'm fine. Just click the button. But I'd rather you say yes, because this will help you make more money. And look, when I say no obligation, I mean no obligation. At the end, you will learn a ton. 
through the strategy session. And we will take a no just as graciously as we take a yes, right? There's no hard pressure or no hard close. You know, it, 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 it is what it is, just like you guys, you know? Well, just like some of you that do it the right way. Th those of you that are high pressure grinders, uh, we're not like that. Anyway, so um, half of more than half, I'm gonna wait for a couple more, a few stragglers. We've had this thing open. Wow, we've had this thing open for almost two minutes. Um, okay, 10, 9, 8. Oh, come on, a few of you, just hit one of them. All right, I'm gonna close this out and say, uh, okay, questions, questions, questions. Let's, let me open the chat. Great webinar, um, does apply, we are mechanical contractors working with building managers. This is not a consumer item. How does the reward work with them? Same way, same way. The process, this, this E-A-R-N, earn, ask, reward, nurture, is exactly the same whether it's B2B or B2C. The formula is exactly the same. So um, how does the reward program work for them? Well, your reward program, not you know, not mine, but your reward program is, is if you're the building manager is the person that is uh, making the referral, building managers, I mean, you give them a gift, you say thank you, you go out of your way to do something for them, oh my God, they will they will bend over backwards for you. I built a business. My very, very first business was similar to this, where my target clients were property management companies, but how did I get to them? I got to them through their building managers. And so the building managers is where I really developed those relationships. And by, um, by earning their trust and doing the right things, showing up on time, doing more than, than um, I, I was supposed to do, saying please and thank you. I mean, they, they loved me. And then they would like take me by the hand and take me to the management companies. And then of course, you know, I didn't know all of this stuff back then. So I didn't have as sophisticated a system as we have now. But if I was doing that now, oh my God, I'd have gift baskets going to them. I'd send them out to, to dinners. Um, I would do all kinds of stuff today. So it's the, the formula is exactly the same. All right? Um, thanks, Mindy. That's, that's sweet of you. Um, all right. Anybody else? No questions? Come on. Still a whole bunch of you on. I got a meeting actually, like in a couple minutes, people are waiting for me. I got it done. I went off on a couple tangents. I talked your ears off at the beginning about anniversary and vacations and technical difficulties and all of that. Um, hey, if anybody, look, anybody gonna be at Yoho next week? Um, I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm on a panel on Wednesday morning, I think. Um, if anybody wants tickets, um, we still have tickets um, for, for uh, ho uh, Yoho. The following week, we're going to be at Hody in Detroit. Um, that's shaping up to be a good event. I, I think we still have a couple tickets left for that. So if you want tickets, and I'll be speaking there as well. And then... Um, at the end of May, the third week of May, I think it is, um, I'll be in Baltimore with Rick Grosso. I'm speaking at that event as well. And again, we have tickets for all of these events. By the way, all of you that are on these webinars regularly, um, anytime you see a home improvement event come up, come and we're sponsoring, come to us because they always give us tickets. And, and I can provide you with, um, with free tickets. The only event, by the way, that does not have free tickets is our event, the Accelerate Live event. Uh, but all these other people have, like, they give away free tickets. I don't do it, but they do. And so 
anytime an event comes up that you see um, and you have an interest in going, talk to us because we have, we'll have tickets and we can get you in um, for free. Okay, so um, that is all everybody. Um, I hope that um, April was great for you. We actually had a record month, which was pretty cool. Um, it, I, I hope that May is gonna be a, a huge month for all of you as well. I know uh, a lot of, um, um, a lot of you are off to great starts this year. And I also know that for a lot of you, kind of your season is like you're in the middle of your high season. Uh, and so I hope you're killing it. Um, remember, make money. Please make money. Don't not make money. Um, oh, Ephraim's asked me, where's Yoho? Yoho's in Orlando. Yoho's in Orlando. Hody is in Detroit. And Grasso is in Baltimore. All right. All right, y'all. Um, peace out. Thank you. If I can help you in any way, just, you know, reach out to me. Um, you won't hear from me until next week because I'm leaving in about an hour and a half. I'm out. So bye y'all. Thank you so much. Hope this was, you know, hope this was a ton of value for you. Appreciate you all.